Welcome back to Mr. Hayden's Ag Lessons. This is episode number 10. We're talking about circulatory system today. Welcome back to my viewers. I appreciate you uh, signing in and viewing today uh, here in Independence. It was in the 60s for temperatures today, which ironically is not a great age to be during the coronavirus pandemic. So, hey, stay safe out there. Practice that social isol isolation. So when we're talking about animals, specifically uh, all the different types of mammals, it, humans are part of the mammal uh, family, um, one of the areas that we like to talk about is we like to talk about the circulatory system, almost the heart of the information that we need to talk about today. So a lot of you might know about blood, you might be grossed out about it, but I don't have anything live here that has blood other than me, okay? So today we're going to talk about the open circulatory system, which a lot of you might not know or, or recognize, but... That is what insects, uh, spiders, and a lot of mollusks, mollusks that, ha that have the open system. And what that means is they don't have the veins and arteries like a closed system, and the blood flows, not really blood, but the uh, myco, let's see here, the hemolymph, which goes through the blood, through the body in the interstitial fluid of the animal, or I should say the insect, okay? And that allows uh, the muscles to contract, con constrict, and to move that uh, fluid throughout the body of that insect. Um, us as humans, uh, we have a closed body system. We, uh, the main job of our circulatory system is to move oxygen throughout the body. It gets transferred from the lungs, put into our blood. That blood is pumped out by our arteries, okay? And the arteries are kind of like the interstate highways. They, they move a large volume of blood that is oxygenated. And from there, it goes into our capillaries, okay? And our capillaries, they stretch out to all our extremities and smaller parts of our body. Um, and when that blood, when it reaches those muscles and that oxygen is moved, then we're looking at the veins. The veins will bring the blood, the deoxygenated blood, back to the heart. The, the heart will pump it to the lungs, and that process will happen all in a matter of seconds. So quite the exciting system, the circulatory system. Another job of the uh, circulatory system is to distribute hormones. We've all been in a really tough or tense situation where all of a sudden we have a burst of adrenaline. That adrenaline gets moved throughout our body using the, the circulatory system. And then it, it does lead me to believe that, you know, why are insects, why are they so cool in tough situations? Well, they don't have any blood pressure because they have that, that, open, um, uh, that open system. Um, and so our closed system, it also, uh, we regulate our temperature, our body temperature. Our uh, body, the internal core of our body is much warmer than our extremities so that, that blood is warmed up slightly and moves out to our body. If you know someone that's uh, experienced uh, frostbite before, we know that the extremities are the part that they, the blood vessels, they constrict, they do not dilate, and that's to keep the core organs in our body warm to provide us uh, the ability to keep on living. And so we already talked a little about the arteries, capillaries, and veins. Those are good ones to know. And then the last one is our uh, body, our circulatory system. It moves cells to fight infection, primarily white blood cells. And I don't know if you guys knew this, but when two blood, uh, red blood cells, when they first meet and it's love at first sight, Sometimes it's all in vain, okay? And so we already talked about the veins there, but they bring that uh, deoxygenated blood back to the heart, and then the system starts all over again. We got to examine some specific animals. I know you guys are a big fan of whales, the largest mammal on the planet. Um, a typical uh, whale has about 2,500 gallons of blood in the body of, of the mammal, or of the whale. In comparison, a giraffe, it has the highest blood pressure of any animal, um, it has to move its, uh, the heart is located seven feet below the brain, and so extremely high blood pressure, and the heart itself in a giraffe actually weighs about 25 pounds. There is our first self pump commercial of the day. We're hearing from Del Rio Mexican restaurant. The chips and salsa aren't the main entree? And then when you think about the giraffe, um, what do you call, if I try to uh, cross a giraffe and a pig, what do you call it? Well, we call it bacon and legs. Okay, and then so uh, after we talked about, I also, uh, the other day, I went to a park that only had giraffes in it. They called it the uh, Jurassic Park, okay? Um, and so in the animal, uh, the larger the animal, the actual, the slower the heart rate, uh, the smaller animal, the quicker the heart rate, and also the metabolism. So when you think about the tiniest mice, they have extremely uh, high uh, heartbeats. Uh, uh, example would be like a hamster might have a heartbeat from 150 to 200 beats per minute. Um, the blue whale we already touched on, when diving into the ocean, it has a heartbeat roughly of four to eight beats per minute. Now, the amount of volume that's moving through that blood, the animal, the whale, it is a large volume. And when it comes up to the surface to get oxygen, that oxygen is brought in and then the uh, CO2 is exhaled through the blowhole. 
Okay, and then um, when we talk about really high, uh, in terms of high metabolism, high beats per minute, you have the hummingbird, which is about 1,200 beats per minute, okay, which is extremely fast. They're all about trying to chase down that nectar, okay? Uh, those facts, if they don't get your blood pumping, I don't know what does, except actually you should know if you watch this because it's the heart, right? Okay, and so um, when we're talking about uh, birds, bar birds also have to have extremely uh, interesting circulatory system because they can fly at different altitudes. And we know as humans, when we drop altitudes, um, our blood pressure uh, might drop, our, our body kind of experiences a lot of different forces. But, and so a, uh, a bird system will have a higher volume of blood per stroke to make sure that that blood reaches the veins as well as the muscles. But what do you call it when two birds, when they fall in love? They're called tweet hearts, okay? And then, uh, Mr. Aid, when the heart stops beating, right, that means an animal's dead. Well, in some instances, that's actually not very correct. An example would be our frog, which pretty much it doesn't even hibernate in the wintertime. It pretty much freezes solid. And so what happens with the, the, uh, the body of the frog is the heart stops pumping, the lungs, they stop constricting, and the brain also stops all function. So frogs pretty much freeze in the wintertime, and then they thaw out in the spring, and they return to the normal animal activities there. Okay, and so um, I hope that uh, today we didn't get too many sump pump uh, commercials, but we're going to hear from uh, Heartland Acres Agribition Center, uh, pre preserving agriculture's history for future generations. And we also didn't hear from Waste Management of Independence. We bury your trash deeper than your dark darkest secrets. And so uh, today we did reach episode 10. I know you're as surprised as I am that we are still uh, viewing these on uh, YouTube. I appreciate those of you that are viewing these and getting through this uh, social distancing time. Uh, we'll keep covering some different systems, not in the next episodes, but try to uh, intersperse them throughout the lessons. Hey, so thanks again. Uh, if you uh, Did you know that if you take all the blood out of a human, it usually adds up to 1.5 gallons, and that person is actually dead then. So, hey, thanks again for tuning in to episode 10. We'll see you tomorrow on episode 11.